Hello, this is Minder Chen. This is the first segment of a series of video-based lecture on electronic commerce, a very important topic for this Management Information System 310 course. And we're going to discuss under e-commerce, the business model, strategy, and how we may implement e-commerce in the so-called network economy. The term e-commerce has been used actually before 1995, but at that time, e-commerce really means uh, something called EDI, which is Electronic Data Interchange. And in about 1995, the internet uh, was commercialized, which means the company are allowed to use internet to, um, to buy and sell. Um, the early uh, pioneer in e-commerce world um, are Amazon um, and, and a few other firms. And when we use the term e-commerce nowadays, it pretty much is referring to um, companies who use the internet and the web to conduct business. However, in order to understand e-commerce, uh, we still need to go back to the fundamental, which is e-commerce still commerce, which is still buying and selling. And so understand the customers, their demand, and also un understand how the producer or manufacturers um, can sell their product or services to their target customer is the foundation to understand clearly uh, what e-commerce is all about and to formulate proper strategy and business model to to build a successful e-commerce company. Let's use uh, this picture to illustrate the change in the airline industry um, due to the impact of information technology. Uh, if, if you remember um, maybe you're too young to remember. It used to be in the uh, late 60s and, and 70s, you as a traveler, you pretty much have to go to a travel agent to book uh, a ticket for airline if you need to uh, need to fly when you travel. And uh, after um, 1979 to late 80, after the deregulation in the airline industry, and the travel agents are allowed to use um, online reservation systems, such as the one developed by American Airlines, uh, which is called actually called Sabret. The Sabret is one of the earliest uh, online reservation systems that um, that can sell ticket not just for one airline but for multiple airlines. So American Airlines can sell ticket for other airlines through the travel agent who has a Sabres terminal in their office. And American Airlines actually for a few years um, were making more money uh, in terms of selling other airlines ticket than uh, flying airplane and carrying passenger. In the late 90s to, to the present day, um, we find out there's more and more online services. In the early day, we have CompuServe, AOL, which is American Online, and Prodigy. Um, they have through those online services, you can actually purchase ticket directly. Uh, in the internet and in the web environment, we have company like Travelocity, Expedia, which belong to uh, owned by Microsoft, or Priceline.com, which allow you to purchase ticket online directly. Certainly, you can go to most of the airlines' own website to purchase ticket. And let's look at just um, Priceline.com as an example of a dot-com or e-commerce company and in terms of its up and down. And Priceline.com was founded probably in the late 90s. 
Um, in in 2010, it is it was recognized as the best performing stock in the S A P S and P 500. And over the past five years, um, one of the unique feature in Priceline.com, if you haven't really used it before, is uh, something we call it um, name your prize, which means that you can go to its website and say, I'm going to fly from LAX to, let's say, Las Vegas, and you're willing to, fa to pay, let's say, $50 for a round trip ticket. So you can name your own price and then Behind Priceline.com, they work with a lot of airline, which may uh, sell you some of the last minute ticket, or if they don't think they can fill all the seats, they may decide to sell you the ticket with much lower price than its um, published price on their own website. And this is sometimes referred to as so-called reverse auction which means the, the, the commerce or the e-commerce really driven by, um, by the customer, by the consumer. Consumer take initiative, name their own price, and then the supplier, um, which are uh, the airline, uh, can decide whether they want to um, meet the requested price um, and sell the ticket with that price. Um, Priceline um, have tried actually sell other um, goods or services such as rental car, cruise package, or even um, gasoline as well as grocery. Um, the, the, the grocery and gasoline um, is no longer offered by Priceline.com, but if you take all of that into consideration, um, this name your price model, also called reverse auction, um, seems to be applicable to product service that are considered perishable goods. Um, what we mean by perishable goods are goods or services, its, it's value diminish over time. Uh, such as a hotel room. If you don't um, sell that room and after um, then keep it empty, then it's useless. Same thing for airline seats and etc. Okay. Uh, if you think about it, um, seafood is considered, relatively speaking, perishable goods. And, and certainly you can, you can uh, freeze it and keep uh, the shelves line much longer, but there's a carrying cost involved and flour is kind of perishable goods as well. Okay. And because if you don't sell it in time, you're going to lose money or not making any money. So uh, company are willing to offer certain perishable goods or services much lower price than usual uh, when they have uh, lots of them in their inventory. And Priceline.com, as we mentioned, has has been doing pretty well, and certainly that attract a lot of competitor, uh, such as Obis.com. Obis was uh, is a con consortium of several airlines came up together to offer um, uh, airline travel services online. Uh, their company Kayat, um, which I think do some kind of a meta search engine to search multiple websites to do price comparison or comparison shopping for you. Hotwire is another one we did mention uh, Travelocity and Expedia um, earlier. So if we think about it, e-commerce, when it first came out, uh, people would um, consider it as a technology which would have the so-called disintermediation effect. Uh, the disintermediation really means that um, we can directly sell um, products from producer or manufacturer to the consumer. Therefore, we can cut off the middle, middle man, middle person, um, such that we can reduce the price and, and hopefully for the producer will have a higher profit margin. 
Um, company who are relatively successful in this area will be uh, Art uh, Dell. Dell Computer has been using the direct sales model um, since very early on through mail order and eventually to the web direct sale. Apple seems to be doing um, direct sale as well, although they do have the so-called uh, Apple Store uh, through the retail, their own retail store. They they are still selling it directly. You can certainly order a lot of their product and services uh, online as well. And and however, uh, this disintermediation uh, seems to have its limit. Uh, and, and it hasn't been really fully realized. Uh, so another phenomenon kind of emerged is what we call re-intermediation, which means that the, the new middleman, the middle person, um, has been reintroduced. Uh, companies such as Amazon or eBay, uh, to some extent, uh, can be considered a so-called in, in uh, re intermediator. Uh, they are the new intermediacy, let's put it this way, which um, like Amazon is not a publisher, um, but they, they sell a um, variety of books and other goods from various publisher manufacturers um, to the consumer. Let's look at uh, the Priceline.com in terms of its uh, stock value. Uh, this is a, a snapshot of its market cap, the total market value of several companies, including Priceline.com. You can uh, you can see from here, um, Priceline.com's market cap in April 16, 1999 um, is more than actually United, Northwest, and Continental Airlines, three airlines combined. And um, however, um, in, um, in 2000, uh, 2000, May the 2nd, I, I actually took a um, snapshot of their uh, its stock chart and you find out the price dropped to uh, the price was about $150 and it dropped to about $57 um, on May the 2nd okay and but quite a few years later uh, it's like 11 years later when I check once again price lines um, stock price, it, it actually surged um, for whatever reason to close to $500. And the market cap uh, has more than doubled to 20, 20, almost $24 billion. Okay. So let's see what happened. I mean, I mean uh, the, 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 the market cap of $24 billion, that's a lot of money. So there's a little bit um, history about Priceline.com. Uh, they they did face lots of up and down, um, but very recently, um, in terms of um, 2013, um, its stock um, price actually topped um, one one thousand for for a period of time. And however, during the dot-com bubble um, busting period, uh, Priceline.com uh, once lost 97% of its market value. And the dot-com um, kind of craziness um, and the bubble busted around a March, uh, I guess it hit the highest point around March the 10th uh, in 2000 and um, but between 2000 and October 2002 uh, Nasdaq uh, which is heavily um, technology kind of stock on uh, the Nasdaq composite loss about 78 percent okay what Priceline.com has been doing, in which may help its growth, is, is use um, 
the the money they raise in the stock market to um, to actually acquire um, a few asset uh, in this case some international um, web uh, booking business uh, including booking.com which is in Amsterdam and and also Agoda which is a Bangkok based uh, a travel website and also very recently acquired uh, the search engine that meta search engine that we, that I mentioned Kayat software corporation for 1.8 billion dollars um, so you can go to this website to look at a little bit of a history of Priceline.com in in terms of its um, its recent surge in stock price. And this stock chart show the um, Priceline.com's um, stock um, price since its IPO. Um, adjusted to um, the current day's value and you find out the price went up quite a bit um, right after the IPO and went down uh, dramatically um, around 2001 and, and start to recover um, around probably 2007 and, and then all the way up quite dramatically um, and this uh, search at the very beginning and more recently uh, probably can consider as a phenomenon and what Alan Greenspan would call irrational exuberance. Um, uh, I'll let you find out. Does it make sense? Uh, does the stock value really make sense um, in, in this case? So this um, kind of brief history of Priceline.com to show you the history of just one of the e-commerce um, company uh, in terms of its um, its business model, its stock value, and 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 its e evolution in terms of um, up and down over the last um, decade or so. Okay, so we're going to conclude this section. Uh, next, we're going to talk about uh, just opportunity that you can hopefully identify for yourself in the e-commerce uh, market space. Thank you for listening. See you next time.